the king. Tartar sauce. <laughs> Mud. Soot. Soot. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to the Bead Gallery And today we're going to be going live with Michelle If you're going to be joining us, um, we'll, we'll start in a couple minutes <clears throat> Today Michelle is going to be making earrings I'm going to check out our YouTube and see if we are live and you can catch us be so awesome because these earrings are bomb diggity and super cute so if you are watching give us a shout out and let us know where you are from so we can say hi we are in hawaii right now and it is still kind of a hot humid summer day hot enough to melt candy corn but these are glass so don't worry they will not melt in the heat Just shut the pizza. <laughs> so Michelle is heading now, coming over so that if you're joining us today, you get to see her make the other half of the candy corn earrings. My stepdad, my beat dad, makes these. They're so cute. And so she decided that she would show you how cute it is. I will. Okay. Oh, from Pearl City, New Jersey. <laughs> wow. It's getting kind of late over there. Hi, New Jersey. Hello. Okay. Am I there? Do I push that? Yep, you are just live. Beep. Am you I live now? Yep, you are live. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. oh no, but what? you didn't switch over. I didn't. Nope, so. <laughs> okay, this one. Button. Here. Now they'll see you. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and welcome to our channel. We're on YouTube right now. Yes. Oh, just checking. Uh -huh. I don't know what's going on right now, but welcome to our channel. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make the second half of this candy corn earring right here just to get us all in the um, Halloween mood because my goodness it is October already. Hi. Hi North Carolina. Hi North Carolina. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Okay so the technique for doing this earring is very easy. It's called basic wire wrap and if you don't know how to do it or if you need a refresher, we do have a full length video on our on this channel here. It's called Basic Wire Wrap. You get to see Jason do the technique over and over again several times in different ways of making links, making little drops, a lot of kind of good stuff. So check it out if you feel not quite comfortable with the technique. Or if you'd like to see a different way to do it. You know, I don't know how everybody does their basic wire wraps because there are many ways to do it. Not just the way we show you. But uh, if you take a look at the way we show you, you might like it because we have taught it to hundreds of people over the 20 plus years we've been around. So it's a good technique. Okay, so let's get started with the earring here. And um, basically, I use just Swarovski crystals. I do have some silver spacers of the three millimeter round variety and a basic daisy spacer. And then I'm using ball head pins. For the majority of the earring, I'm using 26 gauge ball head pins. Because this is an earring, the beads won't get yanked on a lot. So we can use a rather fine gauge head pin. Although for the bottom drop, because it's got this heavier bead on here, I did use a 24 gauge ball head pin for the bottom drop. You can try using whatever you have at home. Um, because these are Swarovski crystals, they're a little bit easier to chip than like a freshwater pearl or like a gemstone. So um, if you have like base metal, like 20 gauge head pins, I'd be a little more careful working with them than what I'm going to be doing over here because 26 gauge, the ball head pins I'm going to be using, very soft and very easy to work with. And I'm using inch and a half. Uh, disclaimer, I did use one inch head pins for this side, but I switched to one and a half for my demonstration because the length will make it easier to work with. 
And it's something that I actually recommend for beginners or people do that don't wire wrap very often. A longer head pin is so much easier to work with when you're doing basic wire wrap. So, and it's also because I made like little stacks of beads instead of just wrapping one three millimeter crystal by itself. So, so much easier to use a one and a half inch head pin instead of a one inch. So I'm making it easier for myself for this show, okay? And for the um, canned corn portion, that's the top of the earring. I'm using 22 gauge half hard wire here. 22 gauge half hard because the hole on the um, lamp work bead is quite large. It is a handmade glass bead. And I'm gonna have to use some three millimeter sterling silver round beads to kind of plug up the holes and hold everything in place. Okay, and you'll see that on the up close camera view in just a few minutes. And then um, the piece of chain that I'm using to hang all my crystal goodies from is actually not a piece of chain at all. It's a component that we have in the store and it looks like a piece of chain. So basically it is three round rings that are soldered together. So it's like a segment of chain. Okay, so I'm cheating because this is a pre-made piece. All right, and that's pretty much all we need. I have 10 dangles on each side, 10 like little drops on each side. So you get to watch me do 10 wire wraps in my video <laughs> today. Okay, yes. Oh my goodness, there's somebody watching from Thailand? Hi! <laughs> I hope you enjoy my video. And Georgia, thanks for joining us today. Okay, I'm going to get started now with our basic wire wrap Halloween candy corn earrings. Okay, so let's see. Let's do this one. Moving on over. Oh, bringing this. <laughs> Okay, so here's my workspace. <laughs> what tools are you using? Okay, today? so today I'm going to be doing a technique called basic wire wrap. And I'm going to be using a few different kinds of pliers. So I have my chain nose plier here. Chain nose plier has the pointy tip and smooth, non serrated jaws. You do not want anything that's ridged on the inside because it's going to damage your wire. So you want to make sure that it's smooth and pointy on the tip. These are called chain nose pliers. And then I'm going to use some round nose pliers. Okay. So round nose pliers, if you can see, this is the tool that I make my loops with. Okay, round nose pliers here. And I'll probably be using my flat nose pliers. Flat nose pliers, like the chain nose, are flat on the inside. Oh, wow, hi. In the UK, wow, and California, welcome. Okay, so flat nose pliers, they're squared off on the tip and they're a bit wider. Okay, and I'm just gonna have a flush cutter. All of these tools are Lindstrom. They are my favorite brand of tool, pliers and cutters anyway. So this is what we're using today to do our basic wire wrap. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect my candy corn piece to my chain. So I have my 22 gauge wire over here and I'm just going to do a loop on one end, okay? So when you do your loop, you wanna make a 90 degree angle. You're gonna get the round nose pliers in there and we're gonna pull up over and around, switch to the bottom draw and continue pass and roll. So basically you have like a lollipop shape here. Okay, 
with the tail sticking out about 90 degrees to the wire that's going to go through your bead. And I like to kind of match the sizes of my loops, so I kind of compare it with the loop that I just made. And that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger here. And I'm going to hold my loop in my flat nose pliers. And I'm going to wrap it around two times. So I have a closed loop here. This is a part I'm going to attach to my ear wire. And then you want to cut your excess wire away. Make sure you cover the tip so it doesn't go flying somewhere, like in your eye. Very dangerous. I'm going to use a chain nose plier to kind of tuck down the end that was sticking out. So I have my closed loop here. Then I'm going to string on my three millimeter round candy corn and a second three millimeter round. So basically I'm making a sandwich with the silver beads here to kind of hold my um, candy corn in place. Okay, then I'm gonna make a second loop at the bottom and remember to attach my little segment of chain. That is not chain, it's just a component. Okay. So to do that, we're going to grab the wire right above the bead with the very tip of the plier. Then I'm gonna push forward to a 90 degree angle. Switch to the round nose pliers and pull the wire up over and around like this. Then I'm gonna to switch to the bottom jaw of the plier and roll forward to a 90 degree angle like this, okay? Sometimes if this space is a little bit too big, you can roll a little bit more forward to bring the loop closer to the bead and then we have to bend it backwards again. So this is just like a way to adjust your space. Because all you really wanna do is make sure you hit the correct intermediate stages so your piece looks right at intermediate stages. It almost doesn't matter how you get there as long as it looks like this before you go on. Okay, so I have a loop that is centered like a lollipop on the wire that's going through the bead. Okay, and then um, this one, I want my loops to be in the same plane, so I don't, I've, they, I want them both to lay flat in my hand like this, okay? I don't want one flat and one on edge. I want both to be flat for this particular design. Then I'm gonna use my flat nose plier to crack open my loop just a little. So it's like opening and closing an ear wire or something like that, where you wanna keep the circle shape of your loop, but you wanna open it up just a little so you can get your chain in. Like this. And then we're going to wrap this shut. What I like to do is cover as much of the loop as I can with my chain nose plier. So I'm between the bead and this wire tail and the chain bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna wrap two times or at least until I touch the bead and it's held in place without jiggling around too much. And I ended up using about six inches of wire to wrap both candy corns together. So I use about um, five inches. As you can see, there's a little bit of a tail here, but you don't wanna be too um, stingy with the wire. You wanna have some extra wire like this. It makes it much easier to manipulate than if you were running out, which again is why I'm using a slightly longer head pin 
for this project when I'm going to attach all my little beads. Okay, so I wrapped it around two times and I'm going to cut my excess wire away. Thus, okay. So now I have my candy corn attached to my chain. I'm just going to go ahead and attach it to my ear wire now. Okay, so again, you swivel the loop on the ear wire open. You don't want to pull the loop out of shape because it's very hard to get it back into the correct shape again. So you always swivel it open and shut like a door. Okay, and we're going to attach the candy corn like so. So will that shut. Okay, and now I have half of an earring. All I got to do is attach all the goodies. You can actually leave it like this too because it's kind of cute with just the bubbles hanging off the bottom. But we like sparkly, so we're going to attach all the crystals. Okay. As you can see here, I kind of put all of my drops on my head pins already just to copy the first side that I did. Okay, It's a little bit different when you're conceptualizing the, the layout of the beads for the first side. I didn't have everything stacked up like this. I kind of went um, from the bottom of my drop up, deciding what's gonna be on a head pin. But once you decide it, all you have to do is copy the first side to make the second side match. Okay, so the second side is always so much easier than making the design for the first side. Okay, but when I do design the first side, a couple of tips that I have is to, yeah, to start from the bottom and work your way up. And another thing is I never really decide, if I'm using lots of different beads, I never really decide on what bead goes where what do you call all together. So I always work from the bottom up and it's just like one bead at a time and I'll add it and I'll see if I like it. And if I don't, then I'll change, okay? So that's a design tip. Work from the bottom up. When you do clusters or like drops like this that have lots of different kinds of beads on it. Okay, it's very hard to pre-plan everything because everything hangs at different lengths and they fall in different places. So, it's easier just to build it from bottom up. Okay, but once you have the first side done, I shall do the second side. So I have all my beads pinned here. And I'm gonna do this assembly line style. So what you do is you get everything done, then we're gonna pick up one plier and we're gonna do the same motion 10, different, 10, 10 times in a row. Okay, so I'm going to get my chain nose plier and I'm going to make 10 right angles. Like this. This really speeds up the process. So if you had to make 10 pairs of these earrings for all your friends, it's easier to do it like this. It's much faster. Okay, so I'm just doing my right angles. So in this design, we have crystals that range from three millimeter, and we have three millimeter round, as well as three millimeter bicones, all the way up to five millimeter bicones. Okay, so we have three, four, and five. Again, my head pins are an inch and a half, which is very uh, ruby now. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now I have all my pins turned to 90 degrees. Then I'm gonna pick up my round nose plier and make my loops. So 
So it's easier to and faster to do this assembly line style because then you only pick up the plier one time instead of switching the pliers with each bead, you know. We're just using the same plier and doing the same motion 10 times in a row. So it's a little bit more efficient in terms of your motions. And it's funny that I'm doing this video because I, um, out of everybody in the store, I am the slowest wire wrapper here. <laughs> I'm one of the slowest ones I know, but that's because I really like to make my loops look really nice. <laughs> I, I try to make them really nice shapes and very centered and very round, so. I'm kind of particular about how they look. So bear with me. Okay. Um, and you notice here I have these in little groups because this is a bottom link. These are the beads that are going to hang on the link over here. These three are going to hang on the top round link. And then these three are going to hang on the wire wrap of the candy cork. Okay, so we have four sections of drops. Okay. Okay. And I have been wire wrapping for, I don't know, 20 plus years maybe 20, 22 years? No, maybe like 25 years. And um, so this technique that we have on our YouTube video, the instructional for the basic wire wrap is a really, really good technique to learn how to do because you can make so many different kinds of jewelry with it because you can use this technique to make drops like I'm doing here. You can use it to link beads together like we did with the candy corn. There's just so many options that you can do when designing jewelry if you know how to do this one technique. Okay. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. <laughs> I was like watching paint dry. There we go. How's it going? I hope this will be inspiring you to do some cute Halloween jewelry this year, even though Halloween is semi-canceled for everybody. Hazel <laughs> missed the start. She mm -hmm. said, our candy corn's a bead. Can you maybe talk about your supplies while you wrap? Okay. And how you pick the colors. Yes. So the candy corn that we have here, somebody was asking about them. They are handmade glass beads that are made by our friend Calvin, Jamie's faux dad. Um, so he makes these and he uses a technique called lamp working. So basically it is melting rods of glass onto a mandrel, which is like a metal rod and shaping it into the candy corn shape. Wow, that's pretty cool in and of itself. And so we're using handmade glass beads for here. And then again, we're using Swarovski crystals for the little sparkly danglies that I'm hanging off of the chain light component that hangs from my candy corn. Okay. And basically when we picked the colors of the crystals, we were inspired by the orange, yellow, and white colors of the bead itself. Um, but it's always nice to have like a range of colors. So, you know, we chose several shades of orange, um, several shades of yellow, and a few different shades of white. Okay, I made all my loops now. 
So you get that kind of more blended look um, that gives you a really nice kind of shaded effect or like a confetti-like effect as opposed to using only a few colors, like three colors or one shade of orange, one shade of yellow and one shade of white. When I do clusters like this, I like variety personally. Um, but it would be cute if you just did even just like one color and just like lots of dangles so it's all sparkly. You just have to pick your favorite color. But I like all three, so. Okay, now I'm ready to start attaching my drops to my chain component and wrapping these guys shut. I actually like to use my um, chain nose pliers to hold my loop, so I'm going to use those instead. Okay, so when you're making the second side of an earring, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind if you're particular about things, okay? Um, one of the things is mm, I like to make my earrings mirror each other, so if a bead falls on the left side of a link, on one side then I want it to fall on the right side of the link in the opposite side of the earring okay so they mirror each other it's a little bit tricky when you start to work with uh, chain components like this that are big and bubbly because sometimes the beads can go through the links and then it'll end up on the other side they can move pretty freely so you don't obsess too much if stuff seems to move and it doesn't make sense after a while it's mostly because the beads can slip through the rings and then the order will change or the side of the chain it's on will change. I'm more particular when it comes to like using smaller links of chain, like finer link chains that um, the beads can't switch sides on you on. Okay, so I have my first bead wrapped here. And then I'm gonna attach the white one and um, if you look at this closely, there's links that fall perpendicular to this loop here and there's links that fall in the same plane, okay? So the links that are perpendicular will have a front and a back to them. So you kind of want to keep the beads in the front, the beads in the front on both sides of the earring so they look alike. But the ones that where you are um, in the same plane as this loop that have a left and a right, th those are the ones you want to alternate. Okay. But again, because these chains, these links are so big, a lot of the beads can slip through. So what you put in the back might up, end up in the front. So don't worry about that too much. Okay. Just try your best. So I'm going to attach my white bead that's at the bottom here. Yes. Oh, so somebody is asking that I seem to turn the wire almost at 180, then I move it back to 90 degrees. What I'm doing is um, I don't like the space here to, I don't like the space here between the loop and the bead to be too big. And a lot of times, if you just do the 90 degrees, um, the space that's left between the loop and the bead is kind of bigger than I like. A lot of people are okay with that. So what they'll do is they'll just turn it to 90 degrees and then they'll wrap it shut. And that's when you need maybe three to four coils to reach the top of the bead. And I don't, personally, that is not my preference. Um, I'm actually showing you uh, how to do like two coils and leave a two coil space. Um, when I actually make jewelry for myself or, you know, when I'm doing my own jewelry, not on YouTube, I like to do only one coil. And there's a different way of doing that. And I'm not gonna show you how to do that because I don't wanna confuse everybody. But I do reposition my loop because I want it to be closer to the bead. And therefore I do less coils to wrap my my loop shut and to get it to the top of the bead because you don't want to just wrap two coils and then have bare wire between the bead and the loop you want to cover that whole neck in coils of wire okay so it's um basically it's adjusting 
adjusting the space. And you don't have to, if you don't want to, I'm just particular about how many coils I do. That's why I'm so slow. Okay, <laughs> right, Anna? That is why I'm so slow. Okay, so now we're just gonna wrap this shut. Okay, and when you're wrapping your coils shut, I do like to keep the wire coils next to each other, really nice and tight, and um, pretty much perpendicular to the wire going through the bead. So always at a 90 degree angle. Okay, there we go. Okay, then we're gonna do the next one. So if we look at this one, I have the dark orange bead is on the, what is this, the right, my right, and then the lighter stack is on the left. Okay, so we'll do that. Opposite, so this one, I'm gonna make the darker bead on the left, and the lighter stack on the right. But again, it can switch places because the links are so large, but I'm trying, okay. We're gonna wrap this shut. And because the um, 26 gauge is so soft and um, thin, it's easy to just insert my link um, into the loop without even opening it, opening the loop a little bit. I'm just sort of pushing it in gently until it goes into the loop. And that seems to work. But if you were using a little bit of a thicker wire, like 24 gauge, you would have to actually swivel the loop open just a little so you can hook it onto the chain. Okay. Let's see. So in this section, I have the white bead in the front, the three stack in the middle, and the sparkly four millimeter bicone in the back in that order on this link. So I'm gonna put it in that order here. And then we're almost done. Yay. Okay. And it gets a little bit unwieldy if you don't trim away your wires as you go, but I don't mind. You get used to it. Okay. Okay, so this is the middle. If you notice, I'm turning my bead for every time I coil the wire. Like every half coil, I'll turn my piece. That way I can keep seeing what I'm doing instead of just holding it in one place and wrapping it around like that. Again, that's from me being very particular about my, what my wire wraps look like. Um, and doing the same motion repeatedly. It's a good practice. And that way you don't accidentally have your coils crawl on top of each other or get really crooked and offline. Okay, so I'm turning it, then regripping and then coiling. Then I turn it, grab it again, and then I turn it again. And again, this is why I'm the slowest wire wrapper in the store. 
<laughs> but it's okay. Alrighty. And now we have to just attach the last three. This is probably the most important one to get in the correct order because um, they can't move. So they you can't fix it after the fact. So this bead here, the light stack, is on the right hand side of my earring. Now I'm going to put it on the left. And then this is right next to it. And this is on the outside. And make sure I get this right. Okay, so this one's going to be on the left. the one that's next to it on this side. That's the stack here. And I'm attaching this again to the wire wrap loop that is um, right next to my candy corn. So this is not on the link of chain. Yay, I don't think I took that long this time. There you go. So the second side of the earring is always so much easier than the first side. It goes so much faster. You have a nice San Francisco <laughs> Hi, everybody from San Francisco. How's the weather? <laughs> How is the weather there? My auntie and uncle live in San Francisco right now. I think they need masks. I don't know. They didn't say anything. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. And watching me wire wrap this very slowly. Okay, so I now have all my beads attached to my chain. And there's all these little pokey bits of wire now that I got to cut off. And then I'll be done. So exciting. Okay. So I'm going to go in with my cutters. And I go at an angle like this so I can see what I'm doing and then I don't accidentally cut my loop. So I'm going in at an angle. And always cover the wire with your finger to make sure that it doesn't go flying off. Michelle, Tanya yes. says, those earrings are so flippin' cute, I probably would want to eat them. <laughs> they are. The candy corns do look yummy, too. So I hope everybody is enjoying my earrings and my demonstration. All right. And we're almost done. Okay, so go in at an angle and trim. Okay. Whoops. Just start cutting everything off. So yeah, this side was so much easier because I used the inch and a half head pins too. Would have been a little bit of a struggle to do them with the shorter pins. One more. Okay, here we go. I have everybody attached. 
just give it a little shake. So I have my um, wire, the extra wires all cut away. And to make it really um, a nice finish, what I'm gonna do is get my chain nose plier and go back and tap down all the little cut ends because sometimes they stick out and it can be a little scratchy or pokey if you have the little tail of your cut end sticking up. So all you have to do is just go back to your piece and one at a time, just press it down. Just a little bit. You don't want to um, accidentally squeeze your crystal because it can crack it. And that is a sad day indeed when that happens. Just gently tap it down just a little so the tip is flattened against um, your wire. Okay, just give it a teeny squeeze, the tip of the wire. So you have to find it first. Sometimes it cuts really flush. We do have like a smaller flush cutter that can get in really close. So sometimes you don't even need to do this extra step here. But I was using the basic flush cutter. So there's just a little bit sticking out, just a little. Probably not enough that some people would notice but I do. Okay. And it's just the little, little details that make your piece really stand out in terms of being well-made and, you know, when you have a lot of um, attention to detail and be very detail-oriented and just have a really nice, clean piece of work. Yes, we have our lamp work beads. We do have them available. So you can, um, we'll get back to you about that. Okay, we do have the candy corns. We have a lot right now. Calvin just made a whole bunch. Okay, so here's the second side of my earring. And here's the first side. And I think, oh, where's my camera? Here we go. I think they're matching. Here we go. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration of a basic wire wrap. Let me go back to the front facing camera. Hold on. Okay. All right, and here I am again. Thank you so much for watching me. I hope you had fun. So now we have a pair of candy corn earrings here. Check it out. Okay, again, these are all just done with Swarovski Crystal and handmade glass beads that are made by our friend Calvin Orr. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration of basic wire wrapping. There is quite a bit here, but it's a simple technique. I know you can do it. And it's so sparkly and cute. I'm gonna put them on here. <laughs> I love Halloween jewelry. My daughter, my oldest daughter is born on Halloween, and she's going to be, oh my God, how is she? Oh God. She's gonna be 19, 19 this year. 19. <laughs> oh, somebody asked a question if I use magnifying glasses. Sometimes I do, I do. Uh, I happen to have really good lighting in this uh, setup here, so I didn't really need to use magnifiers but when I'm at home or when I'm doing a lot of work or when I just get up in the morning and my eyes don't feel completely focused and I'm trying to do small wire wraps from early in the morning and it's not happening I do use mag eyes it's kind of a magnifier that we have and I use those to do my wire wrapping um, just sometimes today was really easy <laughs> it looks like and then uh, it's, it's bad. I got these because I wanted to be able to watch TV while I bead. And I need to wear glasses um, while I watch TV because I can't see the TV screen. But then I, the, um, we don't really have a way of, uh, like this is the least encapsulated magnifier that's kind of out there. And they're very lightweight. So this is a mag eyes that I use at home 
and it's good because it's um, the visibility is the working length is about this far away from your face so it's like beating distance pretty awesome I know Jamie uses these all the time I'm trying not to use them all the time Jamie's just yet. Jackie. Yeah, Jamie's Jamie's five years older than me, so. <laughs> so she needs them more than I do. But it is very handy, comes in handy. And it's lightweight, so um, I've seen other styles. One of our friends had one with a light, and it's supposed to clip to the front of your glasses or something. That thing was really kind of heavy. These ones are nice and light. You can use it with your corrective lenses. Um, I also had to use it because when I wear my glasses, I can't see my phone and I want to mess around with my phone while I'm beating. So that really comes in handy for that as well. Um, I'm not sure what else to say. Are we going to do anything else today? Well. <laughs> now that my earrings are done, are we going to have anything other fun things to show? Are we I good? think, well, tomorrow we're going to do Kunihimo okay. on Facebook, but we'll see if we can wrangle Jason into doing a bangle in the eve in the later afternoon okay so i hope you'll be able to tune in again because we will be having some other fun videos coming up live maybe tomorrow so if you haven't already subscribed please do because we'd love to see you again and hit that little notification bell thingy next to the subscribe button so you'll know every time we come on live that way you can see all the fun things that we do on YouTube Live. We really appreciate you being here with us today. I hope you really like my demonstration of basic wire wrap. You know, check out our YouTube video on basic wire wrap if you do need a refresher or if you were confused by anything about the technique or if you need to know what kind of supplies you need and what kind of tools you need. The basic wire wrap video instructional will tell you pretty much everything that I haven't covered. <laughs> oh margie hi margie we're gonna be signing off now but thank you so much for watching us Wait, tell yeah. me that you're making a kit of the oh. colors yes we're gonna have uh if you want something to match and you like this combination of crystals we do have a few sets left yeah. that you can grab okay so just let us know and we'll see you all again soon Faith by Tanya. Bye, Faith, and bye, Tanya. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you'll see, come see me again soon, okay? And thank you, everyone. Live, love, and create. And we'll see